right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm Kyle. Here are my co-hosts, Matt. And tonight we have a special guest, Coach Tracy Malone, who is the quarterback's coach at Rock Mart Football. All right. Here we go. All right. Welcome on. Yeah. We always do this really poor. Here's the applause. With it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, we are such a rinketing podcast. So if you listen, uh, please enjoy our just what what do we call it? Just amateurism. Like, amateurism. Yes, I was going to say That's novice, so. but I couldn't. Novicism wasn't the <clears> word. <throat> um, so tonight, uh, Coach, uh, he's going to speak about creating an offensive game plan, or sorry, an offensive installation plan. Um, which is probably even better than talking about pure game plans, right? Because we're talking about everything all the way from spring through summer. So, Coach, welcome on to the show. We're excited to have you. Hey, man, I'm I'm tickled to death to do this. A uh, buddy of mine, Micah Hughes, did it. I listened to it, and I'm like, man, that's freaking great. I mean, you know, anytime you get a chance to do this and showcase the school I'm at and the kids we've got and kind of you know, how we do things, it's it's, you know, pretty dang cool. Yeah, yeah. Coach Hughes was great. Um, he actually reached out to me and he's like, hey, coach, I love what you're doing. I was like, well, let's go. Let's get on. It was kind of the same thing. Uh, you know, we have a lot of coaches. And if you're out there listening, if you reach out to us, I'm probably just going to ask you to come on the podcast. Um, a, our goal this year was to do 52 coaches in 52 weeks. So we are Matt. What do we th- how many weeks are we into the year now? <laughs> Six, seven. Uh, I think you're muted, Matt. Sorry, somewhere around that. Yeah. Uh, Matt, yeah. All right. So everyone, Matt's learning how to use his mic for the first time. So that's good. So we're <laughs> we're six or seven weeks into the year. We we tape them a little in advance. But um, you know, if you're listening and you're interested in coming on the podcast, reach out. Come on. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and share this presentation and we're gonna get going because uh I always hate when people take it too long here. What is going on here? Why is my share button? There we go. Uh, Matt's having trouble with his mic. I'm having trouble with my share button. It is just a, it's a tough night for us. And I can't see. All right, here we go, coach. Cool. All right. So uh, I, I was asked to do, I asked to, asked to speak at two or three clinics this off season. And I didn't really want to dive into like a play or a scheme. I mean, that's sort of done. And um, so I, I kind of came up with this. This has always been really interesting for me. Uh, interesting and, and kind of neat to talk to people about how they, how they create an offensive installation plan and a, and a game plan and how it works and stuff. So I'm going to steal an educational term and it's called begin with the end in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a Friday night call sheet, a uh, call sheet that I would use that I used calling plays uh, as a head coach and as an OC for several years. Um, and then we're going to kind of work our way backwards. So that's my contact info right there. You're more than welcome to text me, email me, um, what hit me up on Twitter X. Um, I will send all this to you. Uh, it was, I'm telling you what, man, Twitter is an amazing thing. I, uh, I put a thing out yesterday about um, asking for quarterback off season ideas. I've, I've had a template forever. And honestly, within 24 hours, I had probably 15 different templates and film and even got hit up by a guy from like Scotland about it so i mean it's just you know it's amazing how this <laughs> stuff goes so let's go ahead and dive in hit that next slide and um and we're going to kind of work there so we're going to start with a master ready list um i stole that term from and i know he's kind of the dog days of alabama football but when mike shula was the head coach uh, i was coaching at grayson high school outside atlanta and we went our head coach had played at alabama so we went down and spent a couple of days there in the spring and shula was using what's called a master ready list. So basically, imagine, uh, take your playbook, and the master ready list is like the table of contents, all right? It's everything we're going to do in a condensed form. So it's not completely detailed, but it's enough so that you can see it, and it'll jar your memory as to this is what we do or why we do it, et cetera. So this is going to be a step-by-step process. We're going to start with our master ready list, and the master ready list is who we are. That is what our offense is. Uh, and then we're going to go to our installation plan, which is a way to prioritize who we are. Um, then we're going to jump into a situational checklist, uh, which is what we need. So, again, we're working backwards. We're working from a Friday night call sheet going all the way back to spring ball. Now, in Georgia, we can either do spring and get one fall scrimmage or 
don't do spring and get two fall scrimmages. So the school I'm at now, we don't do spring ball. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a huge believer in it and a fan of it. I'm glad our head coach does it. So that's just a plug for, you know, how we do things in the state of Georgia. Uh, Then we're going to kind of dive into a drill bank. Uh, That's something I created several years ago, an overall offensive drill bank, and then a quarterback drill bank. And I think – and I'm doing that just simply because I'm coaching the quarterbacks – uh, and then I think each position has got to have a drill bank on both sides of the ball, and I think special teams too. But obviously that's a completely different talk. So let's go on to the next one, and that should be um, – Well, Coach, hold on one second. Yeah, please, I'm going to yeah. back you up I'm going to ask questions. Let's make this interactive. No, you're good. Me being a Florida guy, I just have a question here. And you yes. know, I, I played college ball in Georgia, and I even worked in college in Georgia, but – if you guys don't practice spring, that means you start early in fall and you get an extra whatever preseason game? We don't get to start early, but the way it works okay. is – so I'm going to give you two answers. Uh, I've spent a majority of my career <laughs> in Tennessee. So in Tennessee, you can do 10 – you can have – it's like 12 days to get 10 spring practices in plus a scrimmage. And then when it gets around to the fall, you can have four scrimmages and a jamboree. When in Georgia, if you do spring football, then you get one one scrimmage, one preseason scrimmage in the fall, and it's generally going to be the Friday before game one. Uh, if yeah. you don't do spring ball, then you can have two scrimmages in the fall. But here's the cool thing that 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 I believe where Georgia's ahead of the curve um, is uh, we can have padded camps in the summer. So, yeah. for example, this past summer we brought in ten. There were us and nine other teams came to Rock Mart in June, and it was basically everything but knee pads and just, you know, yep. all out, let's get it. And, you know, that to me is so much more beneficial than spring. I mean, most people are at schools where you're going to have very few kids. I mean, you're going to have kids in track and you're going to have kids in baseball and kids in soccer and kids in lacrosse and all these different things. And so you go, and I've been a head coach at places where you go out there, man, and it's like, well, my quarterback can't be here today or tomorrow, but he can be here Wednesday. So what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, and, and so I think, and it's funny, I've talked to a lot of coaches in Tennessee and Georgia, and they're like, you know, most people in Tennessee do it simply because everybody else does, it, right? It's a peer. Yeah. I don't want to look like I'm, I'm getting out work, but if I'm ever fortunate enough to be a head football coach again, spring practice is off the table. We're not doing it. Yeah, that's such a good point. You know, in Florida, we don't get a choice. We have spring ball, and I'm uh, mad. Is it 15 practices or something like that in a game? 20. Well, 20. 19 in a game total. Yeah. Total of 20 organized events. Which I'll argue is too much. I mean, I know I, there's many years that we never made it to 20 practices, right, Matt? We maybe did 14 or 15. Yeah, we got to where we were taking Wednesdays off to give the kids a day off in the middle of the week. Uh, yeah, but that's such a good point. Like, we always had kids in track. We always had kids in baseball and all this other stuff. And and like you said, you're not, you're not playing spring with a full deck. And mm-hmm. while I guess that's great for younger kids, it's not always great for your team overall, but that's, it's a really interesting concept because in Florida you get, you get spring ball and you get one game and then you get one preseason game in the fall. And that's, that's it. That's, that's pretty standard. So I would argue that we're behind most people. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've been not funny. I've been in Tennessee, Georgia and Alabama and people always ask what's, what's the best. And, to me, the better football is in Georgia, uh, but it's more important in Alabama yeah. simply because there's no pro sports in Alabama and the high school coaches are revered and, you know, consolidation yeah. hasn't really hit the state. I mean, I was a head coach at a school that had about 380 kids in it, four red lights in, on the same street in the whole town, no Walmart. <laughs> but we had a field house that was probably three quarters of a million dollars, you know. So, I mean, football is yeah. important there. So, but – uh. Wow, yeah, we uh, us down here in Florida, we we understand that football is valued a lot more in other states than it is in ours, unfortunately, because we got great athletes and no money. I've been keeping up with the the trying to get you guys paid more, man. I mean, it's you know, it's 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 tough. I know, I know, it's tough. No doubt. All right, let's. Uh, sorry for the tangent, no, listeners. No, 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 We're going to get back to it. Exactly. I'm going to flip this next slide. Okay, so. Um, offense, kind of just a step by step on how we want to install this, put this plan together. We want to begin with the end in mind, and so I guess I should have put parentheses there. You know, the game plan, the Friday night call sheet. Uh, I believe in you lay it out in days, not dates. Uh, if you put, it's funny if you you start putting May one as day one. Sure enough, it's going to rain on May one, um, or it's going to thunder, <laughs> it's going to snow, it's going to flood, it's going to something. So 
we just simply, I just lay it out as day one, day two, and I'm going to go through eight days. So our initial installation plan, if we were doing spring football, would be we're going to try to get everything on this inst- on this call sheet in in eight days. Now, that's pretty, you know, pie in the sky. I'm, going to, I'm not going to lie. And so you've got to kind of always be working through that. But I do think, you know, number three, get out of your comfort zone in April and May. You really got to push it. You know, got to throw things against the wall, see what they can pick up, see what, you know, and I think it makes your coaches really dial in a little bit and coach on the run and kind of come up with your own vernacular and your own common language to kind of help facilitate getting this thing in quicker. Uh, come off the field every day and evaluate daily. Take that call sheet and start highlighting what we got in, what we feel good about, knowing that there's going to be repeat days and stuff like that. Uh, stay on schedule unless it's just an absolute emergency. Uh, an emergency being, you know, a, a, a rain day or a lightning day or, you know, something crazy. And then we come out of spring football, and I'm, I'm kind of doing this in the terms of if we were doing spring, because most people are going to do spring ball. Uh, and then round yeah. two of this installation is going to happen in June. And at that point, we're going to go from an eight-day install to a seven-day install. We kind of feel like we can, you know, we can get it now and kind of, you know, we don't have to maybe do as many lead-in days. We can jump into it. Round three is in July, and we're going to try to push it to six days. We're simply going through this this Friday night call sheet with everything in our offense, and we're going to do it in eight days. The next month, it's going in in seven. The next month, it's going in in six. And then round four for us would be in fall camp. And now we're going to really try to push this thing to four and five days, try to get it into four to five days. And then we always have to refer back to the master ready list and the situational checklist. Um, that's something that I started doing a little bit later in my head coach's career. You know, like, for example, when do you put in victory formation? Most people are going to put it in on Thursday before game one. I mean, most people are going to put it in on Wednesday or Thursday before game one. Well, I think you got to put it in you know, early. You've got to start hitting these situations early, even if they're on air. So that's sort of the, the nuts and bolts of this plan and kind of where we're going to go from here to the end of this. Yeah, I, you know, Coach, so I have a question as, as we're going from seven days to six days to four to five, so on and so forth. Do you always – install it the same way and let me clarify that question if on that day one you install we'll just say you know regular inside zone with your whatever your glance rpo is that always going to be on day one yes. or do you flip up some of the days that you do that no try to try to go in order um you know we're gonna we're gonna try to hit different learning styles too but to answer your question we're gonna try to go in order um every okay. every time we restall it reinstall it and then we're going to try to do it where we can, let's say we're somewhere where we've been there for a couple of years and we have film. All right, so we're going to get on the board. We're going to draw the play out on the board for those kids who, are, who, who see things drawn. I am way more comfortable, and I don't know why this is, but I am way more comfortable if you're going to say, hey, coach, I want you to, I want you to learn how to teach meals, you know, the Steve Spurrier post dig, you know, post dig stuff. Well, I saw that drawn up. And I kind of put, I saw it that way and I drew it up and put it in my own language and my, and started working it through my own way. And then I'd see it on film, but the film doesn't really make sense to me. It does, but it doesn't, you know, seeing it drawn. So that's the way I learned, but some kids are going to learn from the film. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to go out and we're going to walk it through and then we're going to jog it through and then we're going to go. So we're going to try to hit every learning style we can as we jump into this. And now once we get through the spring ball and probably June, we're probably backing off of the, the video a little bit, backing off of the drawings a little bit, backing off of the walkthroughs, because now we, sh- we should be ready to rock and roll. Do you find that defensive coaches are and, and players are kind of ready for it because they kind of know that day one I'm always going to get this? Are they annoying about that? Because I, I would be. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> and that's something that I think is, is always tough. You know, I've been – I was a head coach 11 years and an OC. I've been doing this 25. I was a head coach 11, an OC, eight or nine, something like that. And so, you know, it's easier when you're the boss and you have control of this, you know, this stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, a situation like going into spring, if we're in spring football and all I'm putting in day one is wide zone, the way we run wide zone, which yeah. is completely contrary to what everybody else does. Ours is really a Frankenstein run. Um, it's a combo play. Well, that's what we have in. We're not going to put power in just because the defense wants to see power. 
right? We're going to put in yeah, more yeah. Owens before against each other. So, yeah, it does get a little annoying, but that's where I think, you know, and this is jumping off the topic a little bit, but I think offensively the only things we can control uh, in, in a game, the only things an offensive coach and a play caller can control are two things. Number one, the presentation to the defense, meaning formation, motion, huddle or not huddle, shift, whatever, yeah. that, that we can control that and we can control tempo. That's it. That's all we can control. We don't have any control over how you line up, what you substitute, how you match up personnel. We have no control over that. So we can simply control the picture and the tempo of the picture. That's all we got. So as we install and we get into it deeper, well, that menu now has expanded. So now we can go from we're lined up, we're signaling everything in. Now we can huddle, we can sugar huddle, we can bust with wide offensive line splits, we can bust with tights and bunches and all that stuff. You know, we can then control the I guess to kind of tie this in a bow, the picture and the tempo change every month. Yeah. So we're always creating those problems, unless we think we are. <laughs> yeah, I always ask that because um, I used to say, uh, you know, I, being a defensive guy, sometimes, not that I would be mad, but I wouldn't always be happy if the offense always installed the same way because then my kids aren't really going through their progression. They're just like, oh, I know what's coming. And so I'm like, come on, you guys flip it up, do something different. Like yeah, I would yeah. always encourage it. Cause I was good friends with the OC. I was like, look, we need curve balls today. Like throw a couple of curve balls. And I don't want my kids feeling too comfortable. Oh, no, no. So yeah. it's always a question I ask because yeah, defensive the, guys will get comfortable. I steal the John Gruden thing, man. We'll get in an inside run and I'll call boot. You know what I mean? That great story of <laughs> oh, God. he's walking down the hall, Warren Sapp walks by him and he bumps into his, we're going to tear your ass up and, an inside run today, and the first play was a boot. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> no Coach, I, fun story, uh, real quick. Coach Coach Avery, who's come on this podcast for, is a good friend of mine. I reference him all the time. Uh, they would throw RPOs and in inside, and so finally one day, I just you know we don't have our safety. We're a quarters team, so our our free safety is the guy who sits in the RPO hole. So I just stood there one time, and the quarterback throws it, and I picked it off. And I was like, that's where the free safety goes. <laughs> I was so tired of them throwing RPO and insides. And I'm like, guys, there's no, we don't have that guy. <laughs> so it's, oh, uh, it's, we all get competitive. That's the best part of practice. But when you get fired up, the kids were all fired up that I did it and everything. No doubt. All right, let's flip to the next, the next one. This is where we're going to spend a little time now. We're going to dive into this master ready list i'm sorry it's small but like i said anybody that's yeah, watching try. I'll, I'll zoom in on it a little bit oh no yeah. i did it wrong here anybody that wants right. wants this i will be more than happy to send it to you and all that jazz so so we're gonna like i said we're gonna spend a little time on this one um and kind of working and, and normally it's colored but i did this for a clinic and i couldn't honestly i couldn't get the printer to go in color so it just is what it is so working up at the top of that page from left to right the first four boxes you see are inside zone, wide zone, gap, and option. All right. Now, normally, those are going to be red, red for run. So this is my call sheet. This is what I'm using on Friday night. All right. So we're going to have an inside zone column. Uh, and, and I may get a little too detailed. And if I do say, Coach, you've gone off the rails. Um, so in our system that I've ran forever, we, we try to let the whole, you know, even to the right, odd to the left, we're going to let the whole dictate the scheme. Uh, my first boss, my first mentor in football, our system was a three-digit number system. We weren't wing T, we were an I-team, but our system was three digits. So, you know, uh, like 426, 400s were, were gap scheme runs. The two back was the, the tail back and six was the hole, right? So I told you direction, scheme, and back. Well, what we do is we just go, the number is the back and the hole gives direction and scheme. So in our in the system I've ran, zeros and ones are inside zone. Zero right, one left. So on that in that column, we're gonna have 10 and 11, which is quarterback inside zone, 20 and 21, which is tailback 30 and 31. So my belief is when you take a run scheme, bleed it dry. Absolutely bleed it dry. Figure out a way for everyone to carry the football on inside zone. So that can be quarterback. That can be our tailback. Our 30 and 31 is our F, which is a hybrid running back slot receiver. I've been at places where I had athletic tight ends, and I would put those cats lined up in the sidecar by the quarterback and run inside zone to them. Um, we're going to bleed that dry. So underneath that are all of our tags for our inside zone. Chip, lock, ISO, hold, lead, and double. 
all right? Chip being split zone, block the backside in. Lock is where we're going to lock the backside guard and tackle, and we can read a linebacker or throw off a linebacker or, you know, then ISO is where we can block the backside linebacker, hold. You know, we, we have a real unique signal for hold. We just go holding. You know, that now we're going to read the backside in. Lead puts a tight end on a play side backer. And double is something we came up with, honestly, out of a necessity one night. We were playing a team that week. We knew they had a really good defensive line, and they were an even front team. They were going to play them at all four spots. He wore number 99. So, basically, we said we're going to double. This was the call for double. And tight end, you're going to find 99. I don't care where he's at. And you're going to fit in there on it, you know. So, so that's our column for inside zone. So on a Friday night, we've got all that written into the column, all right. And when we get into the game plans part of this deal, we'll talk a little bit more about how we remove or add. Next column over is wide zone for us. So 18, 19, 28, 28, 29, 38, and 39. That's the quarterback, the F, and the T. But now we're going to add 48 and 49, which is our receivers. So now we can run our receivers on our wide zone play with Jet. So that's the first tag, Jet. Yeah. All right. Now, one of the things that that we're I, I'm a signal guy. I like to signal things, and I'll be honest with you, it gets a little wordy. Uh, but my belief, <laughs> is, but my not wordy, handsy. <laughs> that's not a great word, but it's you know that's what it is. But what we try to teach the kids from day one is, look, man, focus on the things that matter to you in the play call. All right, focus on what matters to you. Don't dive into all the other parts, just focus on that. So, for example, if we tag jet, that is going to be a true jet sweep. There's no read. There's no fake. We're handing you the football. All right. If we call fly, then fly means we're going to fake the jet. All right. With the F, fake the jet, and you're going to go block the alley defender. If we say, you know, we've got other ones, belly. Belly, we're going to fake the jet and run a deep swing route. All right, so we want to be very specific. I don't ever want to get caught up in a situation where I'm telling the kid, well, on this play, it's this, but on this play, you need to know that. Uh -uh. If we yeah. want you to get it, we're going to say jet. If we're going to want you to fake it and go block, it's fly. If we want you to fake it and go run a pass, it's, it's belly. So we've got our tags there, jet, fly, hold, lock, ISO, and down. Basically, you'll see carryover. ISO is a carryover. Hold is a carryover. Lock is a carryover, right? So we so now when we put inside zone, wide zone in day one, and day two, inside zone goes in three. We'll get to all that. Well, they're already going to know lock and ISO and hold because it's already in. Next one is our gap scheme. Now, our gap is a little different, and this is where I'm probably – you guys are going to probably hang the phone up on me. I am a huge believer in carrying really and truly only three run schemes. I want to carry inside zone because it's so multiple. It can be a five- or a six-man run with an option. It can be ran out of – 10, 11, 12 personnel, I mean, whatever you want. I, wide zone is what I think we try to hang our hat on. We've been successful running that play, honestly, since 2003 uh, at Grayson, Georgia. That's been something I've carried. So when we get to gap, we're like everybody else. You can go power, you can go counter, you can go power read. Here's how I decide it. We're going to get into spring football, and if we have a tight end that's a thumper that can truly kick out a defensive end, you know, can kick the edge, then we're going to be a power team. If we don't have that guy, but we have a guard that guards that can pull and kick, then we'll be a counter team. Counter being for us, not counter Trey, more counter GY, G, counter tight end guard. All right, so if we have yeah. a guard that can pull and thump, then we'll be a counter team. If we don't have the tight end that can kick or the guard that can kick, but we have a quarterback that can move, then we'll be a power read team, all right, a counter read team. So. And, and when you look in this gap column, twos and threes are powers, sixes and seven are counters. Outlaw is a tag to tell the play side tackle to fan out versus an odd front. So basically, we're going to decide are we power or are we counter? And we're okay installing both of them in the spring. We're okay with it because we're trying to figure out who we are there. Um, so that's our gap scheme run. Then our option tags are always that next column. Options are always going to be some kind of double option. Um, we, if we were good at it, I would, and we're carrying power read, I would carry all three book being true Cam Newton, jet sweep, you know, shuffle, shuffle, read the front side in power read that he ran at Auburn forever speed being power read blocking up front with speed option and dive being power read blocking from the pistol and quarterback kicking off and riding the guy down the midline. So basically you could carry like if we're, if we don't have a tight end that can kick or a guard that can kick, but we, you know, the guard can move and wrap. 
we'll run power read and we'll try to carry all three of those because it's really the same blocking yeah. scheme. As long as the linemen aren't affected, we're good. All right. So next column over is RPOs. They're going to be red as well. I wish I did this in color. I'm sorry. So that's our <laughs> RPO. That's our RPO menu. I won't read all of them. We're running the same stuff everybody else is. We're not really reinventing the wheel. The only thing that I think we do that's a little bit unique with our RPOs is we try to coach them through a confidence. And what I mean by that is uh, a bubble, something as simple as a number two receiver running a bubble and number one block in the corner. How I'm going to coach the quarterback is I'm going to say, listen, dude, if the, the alley defender is closer to the box than he is the RPO, you have no choice. You have to throw. It, it has to be thrown. If you don't throw it, I'm pulling you out of the game. So I'm kind of flipping the script on him a little bit. You know, normally it's we coach them through a fear of if you make a mistake, you know, well, Duddy, no, no, no. I don't care what it is. I don't care what the situation. I don't care if your mother comes out of the stands and says, don't throw it. No, no, no. If the, if the alley player is closer to the box, we spit it. We get it out right now, and you're going to be in trouble if you don't. All right? If the alley player is closer to the throw, then you have to run it. And then if it's an in-between, then I go with your gut, and you're never wrong. That's how we try to coach RPOs. Um, we carry a bunch of them. I am a big believer in pre-snap, just access look RPOs. I don't think they're expensive at all. I think we, they, there's a lot of carryover to them. Uh, I get a little, you know, the, the third-level – bang stuff that Texas and, and Alabama and everybody else is running. They're great, but I don't think a 16 year old sometimes can really do that. That's a difficult thing to ride it and footwork and snap it and get it out of there. So that's sort of my soapbox on RPOs, I guess, but <laughs> you know, so, so basically that's the top, that's our run game and our RPOs and all those are going to marry together. And then we kind of get over to the next four, the next four quicks, full field shots and nakeds. Those are passes. They're going to be purple. All right, they're going to be purple in, on our Friday night call. Uh, I am still a believer. I'm, you know, you can see the gray hair here, man. I'm a believer in quick game. I really am. I know a lot of people have gotten rid of it, and for them, it's just you know RPOs are quick game. To me, you know, for the last several years and this year at Rockmart, even I, I, our number one play call, pass call, as far as percentage and productivity was for all hitches, just four hitches. I mean, it was truly just. Hey, man, yeah. get in two by two, three by one, boom, spit it out, catch it, and get it out of here. Uh, great. Coach, I'll, I'll be honest with you. As a defensive guy, we don't cover yeah. hitches. Mm -mm. We don't do it. A five-yard no there's, coverage. There's no coverage. Yeah, there's no coverage we have besides zero man, and we're bringing six or seven that we cover hitches on. There Not you go. my entire defense. So, so that's, that's a good point. You know, and, and I think that gets lost sometimes on younger guys, like young guys that just get their first coordinator job and they want to be really pretty yeah. with a lot of stuff. I'm like, man, look, there's some beauty. There are beauty in hitches and flat routes. There's just beauty in it. You know, that's just my old gray-headed belief, man. So quick game-wise, we have four in the menu, Houston being hitches, rub being uh, uh, snag, right? No, I'm sorry, 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 rub being like spot, our version of spot. Yeah. Oregon's just out routes. Pacers just slant <laughs> flat. Uh, and then we can go tag any of them. So that's our four quicks. The next one is our full fields. Um, I am not somebody that likes to set up and have a zone side and a man side. And I know that's probably not the smartest thing to do, but I think that coaching a quarterback, if I can just simply get him to understand, Look, man, we're going to mirror this stuff up. So there's going to be a curl and a flat over here, and there's going to be a curl and a flat over here with some kind of middle hank or something. You know, now you can just pick your best side and work and go. And I guess probably now is a good time to kind of share. I don't teach coverages to quarterbacks. I stopped doing it years ago. It, it is – we are a – I am a full progression guy. And everything about that is – I think that it's translatable on a Friday night. I think that I can give kids a progression menu on every pass play we're talking about, and they can just simply go one, two, three, and they can learn that. And it doesn't matter what you do defensively. I mean, it just it's my job to put us in a good play call with a you know, like we talked about. I can control the picture and the presentation. All right, so it's my job to control that and get us in a good spot to call all hitches and give him a window. So full fields for us are concepts like curl flat, spot being snag. Sticks are basically comebacks. 
Oilers route is why sale, why flood, whatever you want to call that. Mesh is mesh. That's probably the one we can tag the most is mesh. Bootleg, boot, we call it boot. It's the old boot routes where it's just a flattening over. We don't run it off naked anymore. We just three-step drop it. We just three-step drop it and get you know, two clear outs on the outside. And whip being just drive in, get back out. So that's our full fields. Our shot plays, most of them you'll notice, are, you know, Vandy, Commodore, Admiral, and Money. Uh, being from Tennessee, Vanderbilt has never been <laughs> And so the only way Vanderbilt's good, yeah, baby, VU, the only way Vanderbilt's any good is if they take a shot, right? That's kind of how we teach yeah. it. To, they have to take a shot. And so, you know, they hired, <laughs> uh, they hired Jerry DiNardo. He was running triple, you know, bone, you know the old eye bone triple, and they were decent. Yeah. And then they got James Franklin in there, gave him his first big shot, you know. So, so Viper for us is four verts. Panthers is nothing but jet sweep with a trail. Vandy for us is is Mills, you know, post on the outside, dig inside. Commodore is just invert yeah. Mills. Uh, Admiral is double post over, and Money is double post wheel. Uh, and that's our shots. And then you can see the tags at the bottom. Most of those are tagged on four verts. Uh, again, I'm progression guy, so I don't teach benders and coverage read. If I'm teaching four verts, it's literally going to be, hey, wide receivers, you've got from top of the numbers to the sideline. We're going to fade you out. Inside receivers, you have one step inside or outside the hash. You stay on your landmark and be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. And then if we start seeing we need to tag something, we can tag something. And we tell the quarterback, literally, the read is, if you want to, if you like the right side better, it's numbers hash backside hash. If you like the left side better, it's numbers hash backside hash. If we tag it, yeah, then there's going to be a tag generally coming from right to left or left to right, and we'll teach him just to go numbers hash tag. So that's how we teach our progressions on something like that. Um, and then our nakeds, then our nakeds are just true all you know slam and slice, which is basically. You know, just tight end slam, get out in the flat, deep over, and then slice has got a deep over with an under the line of scrimmage route. Smash, we can boot into a smash, and we can throw throwback. And that's that. So yeah. that's our run game, RPOs, and pass game on Friday night. That's it. That's the whole menu. There's nothing else. Any questions? Still a pretty deep menu. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, do you do you keep this menu, this exact menu with you on Friday nights, or do you change it up for the game? Okay, so that's what we're going to get into when we get into the install, but okay. here's how it works. Let's say we're us three or the offensive staff, and we're sitting here and we're playing game six, and we just don't really like our quarterback running inside zone against our opponent. So we'll go into this Google Doc, and we're going to remove 10 and 11 from inside zone. It's gone. It's not on the call sheet anymore. Um Let's say we don't want our quarterback reading the backside end either because he's a Division I kid. Uh, we think we, we don't want to do it. Maybe our backup quarterback's hurt. We were trying to protect our starter. So now we're going to remove hole. That's out of the game plan now. So basically every column you see on a Friday night is going to be probably half of what it is, what you see right here. This is everything, and we'll pick and plug. And then if we're going to add something, you're going to have to convince me of what we can remove. You know, I'm not a, I think we've got enough menu to cover everything. Um, generally, yeah. we're going to, you know, Absolutely. that's kind of what I play for. I know it looks like a lot, but truthfully, it's really not. So, second level, start working left to right, screen game. This is kind of stuff I think we're really simple on. For us, we never change the way we block screens. If we're going screen right, the right tackles catch, you know, one, two, and he's working first defender in the in the flat that he can get to. Guards chasing the tackle after one two up the alley. Centers one two and rat kill in the box. And it doesn't matter if we're throwing a slow screen to the running back, an alley screen, or a wide receiver screen. They don't change. The linemen never change. We don't ever change our screen. We don't ever practice our screens live. We only practice them on air, and we'll practice them against those yoga bouncy balls. We'll have like guards and tackles, extra people sit over there and roll them and make them come back. <laughs> I, just, I mean, look, don't even sit here and act like you two have never had an all, all American scout team hero that sits there on the screen and just, you know, and everybody's pissed. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> yep. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not. You're absolutely not, Coach. Man. Because you know what happens every single time, and Coach Bradburn will be over there. Hey, it's, I think this is going to be a screen. This is going to be a screenplay, <laughs> and, and somebody's going to trigger on it. You're going to get somebody hurt in practice. Yeah. Tell I'll the get truth, it, Coach. Tell the truth. 
Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know the plays in practice. I just know how to pick them from guys that call the same shit over and over on offense. So I'm like, here we go. This is they're uh, they're upset because we've gotten to the quarterback a bunch this practice, and I, you know, you just kind of feel it as a DC. I'm like, guys, watch the screen. It's coming. Here he comes. You, used to sit over there. You used to stand two yards behind the safety. Here comes this. Here comes this. I see it. Yeah, I also would be screaming it in the game from the press box and everyone could hear it, so I wouldn't care. <laughs> well, there you go. It's like we've worked together. The, we all know each the other. The parents are like the parents are like, This guy's your own screen up here. Why didn't you guys know it was a screen? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh uh next one is specials. You know, it's our trick plays. Uh we try to have, you know, four or five on the menu. We if we suck at one, we'll get it out. If we're good, you know, if we see something, we might try to add it. Titans for us is a personnel. That's a two tight end personnel thing. Uh, then our protection menu, you know, we're like everybody else, man. We've got, you know, five man protection, six man protection, seven man protection. We got a couple of play actions and a sprint. Um, all right. So now this this next little section, F T Y X Z and O O L. This is where I believe, like, I think we do a good job of this. This is the thing I think. We, we really do well. I think we teach it well. I think we install it well. I think we understand how it works and fits. Uh, and this is sort of the, my belief offensively when I'm calling plays, this is sort of the secret sauce. Uh, these are our triggers. So we'll get to our formations here in a minute. And we don't have very many. But basically what we do is we gonna, we're going to teach every eligible player that they're going to have three or four or five words, maybe even six or seven words or letters, that are going to tell them or trigger them to do something different, right? Um, so that's kind of how we do it, and we tie all the motions and everything together. So, for example, our F, our hybrid running back, right? So when we go into a season, obviously we got to have five linemen. We know that. We're going to have to have a quarterback. We know that. We've been fortunate to be able to find two receivers. Now, I didn't say two great receivers, two college receivers. <laughs> but we've been able to find receivers that can line up and can run some routes and do some things and block. All right, so then for us, these are the, the next three pieces are really important. The tailback, their F, our T, our F, and our Y. Um, our T pretty much is going to be we're, we've kind of morphed into a pistol team, but I do believe this, and I think this is a nugget that some guys might hear and, and think is a good idea. We let the back dictate are we a pistol team or a gun team. Uh, I'll use this example. In 2018, I was the offensive coordinator at Knox West High School. And we had two running backs. We had a senior that was about five foot seven, 160 pounds, east west gun kid. Uh, and we had a six foot one, 210 pound line up in the pistol and pound your ass kid. Right. Well, we weren't really running a lot of, we were running both. The big kid was great in the pistol, sucked in the gun. The gun kid was great in the gun, sucked in the pistol. And so what we kind of <laughs> got to the point was, and that after that season, it really got me kind of thinking, okay, well, I want to be able to let our best back dictate are we a pistol or a gun team. And then it's on me as the quarterback coach slash play caller when I was doing that to to really kind of figure out how to RPO out of pistol. Because it's different. I mean, there's different footwork yeah. with it, right? Oh, yeah. And that's sort of the big – that's been the neat thing for me is like coming up with that, right? So we're going to let the back, the, the T, dictate pistol or gun. Our F is going to be that hybrid kid that's – that. In a perfect world, he can play some slot receiver. He can play in the backfield, and he gives us a jet sweep kid, and he also gives us that sidecar gun run kid. I've been fortunate to find that. That kid is usually in most programs. You're going to look at him and think he's too short to be a receiver. He's not big enough to be a running back. He can't play tight end. He's not a lineman. But when he gets the ball in his hand, some good things happen. So, we're, you know, think about a wing T slot. That's an F for us. Yeah. All right. So then we're going to find our why. And our why had, again, had success finding all different types of body types, man. You know, if we can get one that can attach and be a pro tight end, plus get off and move around and line up in the sniffer and stuff in the backfield, then I guarantee you we can flex him out at six to seven steps away from the tackle and let him work an alley too. We can do, they can do yeah. that. You know, and so then it's on me as the play caller or whoever's calling plays to get it fit. So this is kind of the, the nuts and bolts. We don't really talk about formations. We talk about operations. Uh, that's kind of the term I like to use. 
we have to be able to line up in these sets with these triggers and let them become interchangeable. And we have that is how we operate our offense. Kyle's a defensive coordinator. I have to, I don't have to trick Kyle. I have to trick Kyle's 17 year old kids. Right. Brewer <laughs> words have never been spoken right there. Yeah. So I'll never to... trick Kyle. He'll never admit to it. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I've been tricked one time. One just once. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you have to, you know, my job is to start the tight end here, motion him here, freeze the cadence, flex him out here, bring him in, start him tight, bring him wide, yep. that, that kind of <clears> stuff. And so we spend an inordinate amount of time on our operations periods. That's really, if we go in spring, like what I believe is don't do spring in Georgia, but we can take them out and do what we call four on ones all the time. I can go out with four players and do whatever I want to do. So I'll take the tight ends out and we can go for, you know, we can just spend a day on formations and motions and operations, take the F's out. We can spend a day doing that. We can do that every day if we want to. Right. Yeah. So our F has A, B, C, and D uh, kind of vision with me, five offensive linemen. We're going to line him up on the left-hand side in the slot off the ball as a receiver. That's A. Then we work into the end manual line scrimmage off the ball B. Go across C and D. A and D are opposite of each other, B and C. Um, you know, like Real original- quick, Matt, Matt, that sounds familiar, but you use numbers. Remember how you used to do that? Yeah, but I, I mine directly related to my running back. But it's similar, though. Gotcha. Yeah, similar. Very similar. I wish I could take credit for this. Honestly, A, B, C, D, at bat, cat, and dog all came from a, a legendary coach in Georgia named T. McFerrin. When I was at Grayson, our head coach had worked for and played for T. McFerrin. And so, that, you know, that's kind of – I still, I, I borrowed every bit of that. Um, so, A, B, C, D, R and L just puts him in the gun, you know, gun sidecar right or left, plus can put him on the ball, stack, stacks him behind a tight end, empty can split him out to a wide receiver, the widest wide receiver position, and bunch bunches him in. So, we've got that. Our T, our T has a – our F has no home position. There's no formation word that's going to tell him where to go. We're going to always have to call A, B, C, D, R, L, plus stack, empty, bunch to get him somewhere. Our T does have a home position. He's our pistol. He's in the pistol. But then his stuff mirrors the F, at, bat, cat, and dog, A, B, C, D, same stuff, empty and stack. So we can do the exact same stuff with him. Our tight end now, he'll have formation calls, but then he also has strong and weak, which is sniffer, sniffer right and left. He has king and queen, which is – sidecar gun right and left, right? That That's it. And then bunch can bunch him. Our X's and Z's, we've got all those. And that's the same stuff everybody's doing. We can get them in tight. We can get them in wide. We can individually bunch them if we want to. We can bunch them body. We can move them around. And then our offensive line, we can go wide. And that gives them about six or seven foot splits. It's funny. I, I spoke at a clinic in Atlanta two or three weeks ago, and Dub Maddox was there. And Dub and I have known each other for a long time. And we're talking, you know, after the clinic, we're just kind of hanging, hanging down in the lobby. and he said, look, man, you've talked about these wide splits. And so we sit in our own napkins and we're drawing it. And he says, okay, so wide splits really made the inside zone go. No, it didn't. And I thought it would, but it didn't. But tell you what, it did go wide zone and jet sweeps and screens, believe it or not. We got into wide stuff and our screen game was unbelievable out of it. Our jet sweep game was unbelievable out of it and our, and our wide zone because most people's answer is to take defensive linemen and just line them up in a gap and let them blow and go. Well, we were we were we were just kind of hitting them on the edge, and now you got big kids in space, and it was you know it wasn't fair, and so now that's kind of a you know that's kind of a sidebar. And then the other thing is you'll see frog and flag. We don't go tackle over; we go guard over. I feel like defensively, you know, defensive coordinators are going to talk about you're going to look for tackle for seventy and seventy one. Well, seventy or seventy one will go over. You're going to find it, but they're not looking for the sixties that are guards that going over. And so we're going to go t- we're going to go guard over out of a sugar huddle and run a wide zone, right? So now, we're going to hop down one column, then we're going to come back to where we just left. And the guys, if this is boring, say, man, this sucks, man. I, I mean, I'm just, this is kind of going no, through. keep this. going. <laughs> You're great, coach. Right. So, <clears throat> sets, our formations, right and left, that's pro right and pro left. The X is always on the left-hand side. The Z is always on the right-hand side. The tight end is going to line up on the ball right or left. Rocket and locket is nothing but – you see the R and the O in rocket. That's right off, rocket. L and O, left off, locket. So now that's just pro right, off the ball. 
Then we've got Rex and Lex, which is used to be called right flex and left flex. Well, now that's just Rex. That's right. You're on the ball and you're flexed out. Lex on the ball, flexed out. Razor and laser, R and O. There's an R and O and an L and O in those words. So you're right off, left off. So now we've got different ways to get the tight end flexed out. Ram and line is nothing but twins, old school twins. And we teach it this way. Ram, R, it's R word, tight end's going right. The A tells the Z, you're across. Ram is across. Lion, left and the O in there, left over. I had a receiver coach that he used it this way. Ram, you're going to run away from a ram. Lion, you're going to run away from a lion. Yeah. And, and it brings back <laughs> memories to me when I was coaching at Grayson. We were the Grayson Rams, and we literally had a freaking live bighorn ram <laughs> and ma- ma- mascot. And they'd run that sucker out, and they would always tell you, don't look at him and stay away from him. Because he was, he was being <laughs> crap. So basically, now here's kind of the going back to the operation of it all. And we've not really even talked about our emotions yet, right? We've not even really kind of got into those. But think about this way. Now, let's just look at motions. Motion, jet, fly, belly, hip, and hop. Hips, motion wide in, hops, motion tight out. Now, yeah. you start doing the math. Take all the F triggers, all the T triggers, the Y triggers, the X and Z triggers, the O-line triggers, all the base formations, and all the motions. I did it one time. I mul- you started multiplying all that up. I went to one of our math people, and I said, okay, how would I get to this number? <laughs> And it was roughly about six, six it was a roughly a little over six thousand different formations. Yeah. Now, sounds like a lot, but think about it. Our F never has a formation that tells him where to go. He just learns his triggers. He just learns his yeah. triggers. The T just learns his triggers. The tight end has to learn R and L words plus his triggers. The X and Z, they never change sides except for Ram and Line. So they just need to know is the tight end with me? Okay. Is he on or off? I'm that tells me if I'm on or off. Right. They just have to learn those plus their motions and their little tags. And the O-line has to learn their tags. So now I can go into a game week nine and all these bullets are in my gun. Yeah. All of them. So now, Kyle, you've got to spend time. You know, there's no way you're covering 6,000 formations. There's no way you're covering, in my language, Rex. So that's tight end flex to the right. Now I'm going to motion the Z across to just run inside zone. But that to you is two by one, but now I've changed the corner strength motion, though, you know what I'm saying? So that gives yeah. you, you know, so that's, so that's kind of how, the, and, and Matt, to, I know what your question is going to be. Those never changed. They're always on the card because they're always bullets in the gun. We've got to have the fire because that's what we do. We operate. Uh, personnel. I got, Rick, Coach, a real quick question. Please. So personnel-wise, I, I see you're about to talk about it, but it's very clear you, you do not have that many personnel groupings. You guys no. just do a lot out of them. Yes, sir. So here's my belief, <laughs> and you tell me you're a defensive guy. This is my belief. If, you're pl- if I'm a head coach and you're playing me, we're playing each other, our teams are going at it game three, and I jog four wide receivers on the field, you're going to start cram- screaming 10 personnel, 10 personnel, and there's only so many things I can do out of 10 personnel. Yeah. Power is probably not happening. Inside zone with a kick out's not happening. I can't ISO block the backside. So I, I, but I've got things I can do and things I can't do. Here's my belief. I want to be able to get in 11 personnel with my pistol back, a tight end, two receivers, and my F little hybrid dude. And I want to give you doubles, trips, empty, two tight, yeah. one tight, two backs, one back, no back, bunches, guards over every kind of motion and 6,000 different pictures and one personnel. Cause I think then I can get, if I'm giving you tight end surfaces, that's going to elicit a specific response from you too, right or wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love teams that personnel cause we can personnel with them. Exactly. Teams that don't personnel, you can't do it as much. And we, and Matt knows this about me. We run about six or seven different packages on a Friday night. There you go. And we normally have great triggers to get those. We're very, we were very efficient at getting them on and off the field, but it was based off of personnel of other teams. Hey, you know, this, so I, this, I agree with you. That's why I asked that question. Cause I was yeah. like, huh, it seems like you don't run a lot of personnels here, coach. So this year, coaching quarterbacks <laughs> at Rock Mart, the, the guy I worked for, he played quarterback at Liberty and he was a coach in NFL Europe, believe it or not. And he, he is a personnel and formation fanatic. He loves it. So, I mean, I'm talking about eight and nine different personnel groupings. And I went into the season and I, you know, I remember telling him, like, I was very, 
had some nervousness about it, like, is this really, can we keep, can we learn it all? Stuff like that. But, you know, I, I, cause I looked at it from the lens of, I know I can teach 11 personnel all these different looks because I'm I'm really shrinking the scope of what they're thinking about, right? What they're focusing yeah. on. But when you're doing it out of eight or nine different personnel groups, but I'll give the man credit. We got beat in the state championship game in triple overtime. So he's doing something right that I'm not doing. And so, I'm <laughs> so, I'm learning. so yes. Yeah, ready. I mean, right. There, there's no wrong way. I, I can just tell you my preference. And my preference is someone that has a lot of personnel groupings. We yeah. like to match it. And my preference has always been 11 P. Yep. So regulars are 11, Titans is two tights, and goal line is goal line. Uh, flipping around, our cadence, We, I'm not a go on two guy. I, I, one term that I use a lot is daps. Uh, this is a coaching point, I, and it was funny. I got hit on Twitter the other day. Coach, what is a dap? Because I said it in the tweet. Uh, so a dap, honestly, I can't lie, dap used to be dumbass play. That's what it was. It don't have dumb. <laughs> so then it kind of built into dumbass penalties. Well, then I was at a school a couple of years ago in Tennessee, and our superintendent followed me on Twitter. And I'm talking about dabs, and he's retweeting it. And so I figured oh. well, I, better, I better change it. So here's where it is. Daps are dumb attitudes or actions, plays, penalties, plans, and people. And so I don't ever talk to a quarterback about throw. Why'd you throw that interception or why'd you fumble? It's that's a dap. Why did we have the dap? Let's fix the dap. All right. And so that's kind of and for me going on two is just a dap waiting to happen. So I want to freeze yeah. cadence and just go on one. Just freeze and go on one. And and more times than not. And one yep. year, one year my my son played football for me for two, for three years and he started for us for two at left guard. And four of the five linemen are in college now to be to be engineers. They were all Jeez. super smart. And they had a little signal. They'd look at me and they would just give me a little signal. You know, every one of them had their own little signal of, hey, man, my dude lining up over me is jumping our snap count. So that means yeah. you know, got to freeze it. So two cadences, goal line personnel can be a lot of different things. And, and I've got them all wrote down there. We're going to pick one each year. So it could be, I mean, it could be a year where we're just going to stay in our 11 personnel base stuff. Or it can be we're going to get into our two tight Titan stuff. Or we're going to go six linemen. Or we're going to go seven linemen. Or we're going to go three tight you know, Whatever that team looks yeah. like, that's probably the one that's got the most flexibility. Our two-minute stuff, we're going to try to find just six or seven things we can do in a two-minute situation. We're going to try to carry two or three two-point plays, a couple of end-of-game plays. And then at the bottom right, I'm going to have the chart of go for two. So that's it. That's the master ready list. That's what we're going to carry on a Friday night. But obviously, it's going to look a little different because we're going to be pulling and plugging and, and stuff like that. So. We're ready to flip it to the next one. So master offensive operations install. So now we're kind of getting into the meat of this. Now we've, we're kind of working backwards. We've got our game plan. We've got our, we've done our game plan. We've got our Friday night call sheet. And now we're going to start working backwards. So day one, and this is basically the operations. All we're doing here is formations, motions, tags, triggers, Again, going back to that number, over 6,000 different pictures we can give a defense. This is what we're looking at. Day one, we're putting in our, our tight end on the ball formations, right, left, and Rex and Lex. So he's got to be able to line up in pro with a hand in the dirt to the right or the left, and he's got to be able to flex out and be on the ball as an inside receiver. So we're going to put those two in day one. No tags go in on day one. No motions go in on day one. We're going to put our F in the backfield in R or L in day one, and we're going to let him get out into the slot A and D day one, and our tailback's going to be able to go A and D, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, 99% of the time, we never let our tailback go line up anywhere other than pistol or we flare him out. That's about it. We try to keep his world very consistent. Run the football, be a pass protector. So that's day one. So that's it. So day one, now, it's, I mean, obviously, this is, these pages broken up. This is just the top of our install page. But this is all we're talking about right now is how we're going to install our operations day one. Day two, we're putting in our off-the-ball formations for our tight end, Rocket Locket. So that's just pro off. And we'll literally go out on day two and we'll say, all right, tight end. On day one, we had right. You're a pro right tight end. Well, today we're going to go Rocket. So that's right off. But you just simply take a step back, put your hands on your thigh boards, and you're just sitting there in a two-point stance. And then left and lock it. So that's day, day two. No tags go in day two. We're going to put in our sugar huddle on day two. I have a really good friend of mine, a coach, and he he taught me something a long time ago. He said, and this I think will ring true with you. 
when do you put in onside kick and onside kick return? Usually on Wednesday or Thursday before the game. His belief is put the hard crap in first. So he, his when he goes out on kick and kick return, he's putting in onside kick and onside and hand team day one. That's what he's going to put yeah. in when he's in his mm-hmm. team. And so I'm going to put in our sugar huddle day day two. We're going to get, we're signaling day one, then we're going to sugar huddle day two. We're going to have our jet call go in, then we're going to move our, our T and our F around a little bit. Day three, we're putting in our twins formation, our freeze cadence. One thing I learned, I was in Knoxville coaching, and we, we played a team that was very <laughs> good. They've won a lot of state championships. They had a year, they had a string of like 21 years in a row of playing in the semifinals or better. And they were the best team I've ever seen at Steel and Seagulls. And so we had that made us have to come up with more signals for our freeze cadence. We have, we carry three now. We have carried three signals for it because this was it. That was freeze, right? And everybody can figure that one out. So now yeah. we've got two others we'll carry. Um, so day, so day three, we're putting in twins. We're putting in our freeze cadence. We're going to put motion in for everybody. This little sidebar. Back in the day, I used to say like X motion was exit. Z motion was zoom. Y motion was yo. F motion was Florida, whatever. Now it's just like if we're going to send the X in motion, we'll go X motion, Y motion, T motion, F motion, Z motion. We just simply have one signal for it, and that is cut down the teaching and the learning time exponentially for us. Um, and then we're going to put in our under, you know, because we're a gun team. So we're going to put in our quarterback sneak from under center on day three. That's a hard thing. Most of the time people are putting that in late. We're going to put it in on day three. Day four, we're going to no formations. They're all in. Right, left, rex, left, rocket, right, locket, razor, laser, ram, and line. They're in. We don't have to do anything else. So now we're going to put in bunch and wide and start tagging all that stuff. Day five, tight formations, fly, which is fake the jet. Day six, we're going to put in our belly tag, which is fake the jet, run a, run a route, guard over stuff. Day seven, day eight. So that's our formations. All those go in day eight. But think about it like this. Our formations are in by day three. They're all in, the, you know, the, the yeah. pro and the off and all that stuff. Now, we're going to start getting all our triggers and stuff in later, but that's it. And once they're in, they're in. And we don't ever have to add another formation. They'll all marry up and hold true no matter our personnel we're in. All right, so the next page, master offensive run and RPO install. All right, so day one and two. Now, this is something where I have – had to battle with with O line coaches in the past because look, coach, we need to hit, we need to be able to do different things. The defense is going to tee off on us. We're going to put our wide zone run in day one and two, and nothing else. That's it, day one and two. The absolute worst ass chewing I ever took as a coach. The worst it was 2019. He is as good a man as you're ever going to meet. He's a really good friend of mine. He was my son's sophomore coach. He, I, I would, if he called me right now and said, Tracy, I need you to come to Knoxville. I'd drive right now. It's whatever time it is. I'd go and I wouldn't think twice. But um, anyway, we we had wide zone in day one of spring. And we go in and he decided to put a fourth and one or two in the deal. And he's just, hey, we're going to run fourth and two. All right. We ran wide zone, got stuff. And we went in after practice and he blistered my ass. I mean, he was going off. Like, you know, why don't we have power in? I'm like, coach, we only have in wide zone, right? I mean, but it was bad. But anyway, today I'm going to kind of go fast because we've been going for a minute. Day one and two is wide zone. All the different ways we can run wide zone with RPOs. So you can see the RPOs. We're going to put in one a day. Day one and two is wide zone, different ways to do it. Day three and day four are inside zone, but we can also bleed the wide zone in because we've got it, right? So we can yeah. really, we've got it, so we can bleed it in. So we've got inside and wide, all the different pictures, all the different RPOs. Day five, now we're going to start adding some more lock tags and different things on the backside of our zone. Plus, we're going to put in power day five. So really, by day five, we've got an inside zone with most of the pictures, wide zone, and our power play. Day six, we're still running inside zone. We're still running power, but we're also going to add power read because like we talked about, we got to figure out power, counter, or read. we got to decide which one we are. Day seven, you can see now we're going counter with a different kind of power read option play. And day eight, we can review it all with counter and put in the third option. So basically, we're going to work it that way with all our RPOs at the bottom. Make it, we good? We on the same page there? Cool. Yeah. Co- right. This makes perfect sense, Coach. And and what's crazy is looking at this is just about exactly what I used to make every year. We used to build it out. We used to restructure <laughs> it and make sure we had it for the personnel we had. But it's so much smoother installing it in this manner. 
it's worked for me. And I'm sure it, some people are going to watch this and be like, yeah, it's a waste of time. But it has just worked for me. I mean, it, you know, being able to go sequentially. Um, so now we're in pass protections and, and quick game. So day one, we're going to put in our empty, our 50 protection and our 60 protection. They're the same thing for the offensive line. They don't matter. It's just man slide. We're either going to have a back fit or he's not fit. We're going to put in all hitches day one. We're putting in our spot route day two, our out route day three, and our slant route day four. And the protections stay the same. Uh, day five, we're going to put in – now we're going to start adding our go tags. Houston go, that's hitches and go. Oregon out and up. Or Oregon go, sorry, out and up. Pacers and go, that's nothing but slug up. All right? So that's really consistent, kind of marries up, holds true. All right, next one. Full field shot install. We talked about that. You know, so we're going to put in we're going to put in one quick game, one full field, one shot every day, and one RPO. And we're going to honestly we're going to practice most of those on air. Again, progression guy early on, especially the first time through. I don't care what the coverage is. We're simply going to start teaching and kind of. For me, it's more important that the quarterback understands footwork and where I'm going to go with the ball, and the receivers being in the right spot as opposed to hey they're in cover four or they're in cover two or they're in cloud or they're in mini or mod or stubby or stumpy, you know, <laughs> call our password. So you can kind of see where we're going through there. Day one's curl and four verts. Day two is spot and in meals, football terms. Day three's comebacks and uh, inverted meals. Day four's mesh, admiral's double post over. And you can kind of see how we work that and we can tag it and all that stuff. And that's it. That's our, that's our full fills and shots. All right, next one. Nakeds and screens, we really don't put them in until day five because we carry a different naked protection, and I want to get good at our base stuff. I want to get good at our five-man man slide, six-man man slide, seven-man. I want to get good at that stuff before we start moving the pocket. And then we're going to put you – you can see we're going to put our nakeds in day five, six, and seven, and our screens in day seven and eight. Again, sometimes yeah. people will say, well, screens are a little more difficult. The way we do them, they're really simple. So we're going to put them in on there. All right, now. Flip it to the next one, offensive situations install. This is something that is really, I think, is, is pretty good is because I don't want to do these late. I want to do them early. So we're going to put these in throughout the first eight days of practice. Sugar huddle, quarterback sneak, day four and five, we're putting in two-minute offense. And it's probably just going to be on air, honestly. Or I, if Kyle and I yeah. were coaching together, I'd say on day five, hey, Kyle, you ready for some two-minute? If you're ready for some two-minute, well, maybe not with my D-line. Okay, let's go two-minute, seven on seven. You know, or let's go yeah. two minutes, you know, or whatever. But, you know, we're going to just simply work our two minutes. And even if it's on air and we're just calling pass plays we've already put in day one, two, three, and four, you know, but we're just kind of, you know, we're just trying to kind of go and get them used to operating on that, get the ball back, the receipt, the, the official, all that stuff you're trying to coach in those those times. Day six, we're going to put in victory. Day seven, eight, we're going to put in our Hail Mary stuff. You know, the end of the game. We're going to try to carry two or three of those, whatever those are. You know, if you got a big tall receiver, I want to do this, or I want to do this, or I want to get a crosser, whatever. All right. I know I'm going quick, but okay. Next one. So this is a situational checklist. A buddy of mine gave this to me several years ago, and he he has it put out in a deal where he's got it in like boxes, and outside sugar huddle is going to be date, and you write in the date you covered it. And you make the box big enough where you're, because you remember now, we're installing it in eight days, seven days, six days, five to four days. So then we should be yeah. able to hit the sugar huddle four times. And we can throw it in any other time, but we need, we can probably hit it four times easily. You know, snake, whatever. You can put your date on there if you want to, or you can put check marks or whatever. But it's good to kind of have that and work back for it and work back to it. And then if you're an OC or a head coach or a DC, you know, you can come in after day five or six, Kyle, and say, hey, man, I need some scramble drill. Yeah. Can you work that? Yeah, man, we, we put that in day three. So we can get in there and we can figure out a way to give you some scramble drill. You know, and that's just where we're trying to work together. All right, next one. Offensive drill bank. This is something I think that if, if somebody's watching this, I would steal this because I stole this. I'm not going to lie. That is every drill as an offensive coordinator slash former head coach that I ran offensively. That's everything. So we've got our group drills. Uh, for example, most people take mesh and mesh drills are quarterbacks and running backs working their meshes and handoffs. Well, we want to run, run it to everybody and we want to have different things going. So like I could have a quarterback, a QY mesh, that's quarterback and tight end. Okay. Well, that could be us working a Y motion in or out or across. That could be that mesh day. 
Or if he's a runner, we can work Y inside zone. Or if he's a real good runner, we can work Y jet sweep, the way Georgia does with Brock Bowers. You know, they're running jet sweeps to the dude. Or yeah. or we're just going to work – the tight end's going to be running a lot of flat routes that day. Let's go QY mesh, and we're just going to work quarterback Y flats. Same thing with the F. We're going to figure out what's going in that day, and we're going to have a four- to five-minute period for each one of these so they can work a mesh. Quarterback tailback mesh, because those pistol runs are different meshes than our F sidecar gun runs. Uh, quarterback and receiver, X and Z perimeter mesh. Quarterback and O-line pup. I am a huge believer in getting, if you're going to have your quarterback involved in protection. Now, I'm not a big fan of that. I want our quarter, I want our center to call our protections. But I'm a big believer in quarterback and offensive line working against four defensive linemen and maybe a linebacker or two, and the quarterback getting live pocket footwork as opposed to going on dummies or bags or whatever. Um, you know, run in RPO meshes, inside run. So there's our group drills all together. Then we've got our run drills. We started doing this a few years ago. We go to an inside run period. Let's say it's supposed to be 10 minutes. We're going to schedule it for 12. In the first two minutes, we're going to walk through. You go watch an NFL practice. What are they going to do? They're going to, be, they're going to meet. They're going to go out and they're going to walk through, and then they're going to do a run through. Well, we're going to walk through. If we're putting the insides on it, Dave, we're going to do two minutes of just walk it through, get them comfortable, then they can go. Then we've got mesh drills, RPO mesh drills, inside run, half line, half line RPO, half line option. You made a statement, Kyle, about your, your guy was calling RPOs and inside run. <laughs> I love RPOs in half line. I love them. <laughs> yeah. There's receivers and DBs out there, and you know, and if we're going to do it, let's do it, right? Yeah, it makes sense there. Doesn't so, make sense in full inside run. <laughs> no, sir. So, all right, team drills. This is one a lot of people will do team takeoff, right? A lot of people are going to start practice with a team takeoff. I want to start practice with a team takeoff working all of our exotics. The six-foot offensive line splits, the frog and flag guard over, sugar huddles. All, we're going to do all that funky stuff in our takeoff period. Then we've got walkthroughs coming in, coming all the basic stuff everybody else does. And then we've got our pass drills. Routes on air, okay, 2K. I'm sure you guys have seen that on Twitter. You know, Kirby Smart does the 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 perimeter RPO stuff. He calls it a, a millennial Oklahoma. Millennial right? Oklahoma. Yeah. And, and, and look now, I'm gonna tell you what, I think that is as good a place to get best on best work because you can just simply go, hey man, we're gonna lay a dummy down and we're gonna go right side for four minutes. Yep. And we can go left side, you know, as I believe that. You know, then you just kind of keep going through seven on seven red zone. I'm not a huge seven on seven guy because I'm a progression guy. I'm more of a routes on air and let's time it up. And, you know, but then one thing you'll see there is pup. This is something I started doing several years ago. I want yep. my 11 on offense, the 11 on offense versus the defensive box only. And then the offensive line coach's job is to give us the two or three best blitzes he thinks that are going to give us problems. And we're going to work those against with the, with the offense is 11 against the box, and that's all we're going to do. We don't care about corners or safeties and coverage because progressions. So we're going to work that, and that's all we're going to do for eight or nine minutes. Now, in that, we're going to have a quick game, a shot, a full field, a naked, and a screen. That'll be about the only time we ever run screens live, ever. And we're going to work one or two, maybe. All right? So we're going to have that drill bank, and that's our drill bank, and those are the things we're going to be pulling from. And what I would really like for is for that to be bigger. I would love to have more drills and we throw it in and we're going, we've stole this. We went to a clinic and we saw this. All right, next one. So this is just because I coach the quarterback. So this is the quarterback drill bank. And I told y'all before we got on this, you know, I was, I spent all day today really working on off, off season quarterback work and templates and stuff. So that's our warm up. We're going to try to do that at the same thing every day. We're going to work option pitches, even if we don't carry option. So you can kind of see all the stuff we do. And that's not, man, that is not like, that's day old bread, as a buddy of mine says. That is stuff <laughs> everybody does. Run meshes, we're going to work those, get all our runs working in. Our play action meshes can be play action stuff, RPO, whatever. And that is a typo that should say RPO. All right, next one is our is um, is RPO meshes, drills, daily musts. So we've got all our drills. We've got everything kind of, we've already talked about all that stuff. You know, uh, come to the next one. Next slide. So this is the daily must. And this is something I talk to our quarterbacks about. Again, no daps. Right? We're going to eliminate daps in our life. We're going to eliminate them in the classroom. If the teacher says put your phone up and you got your phone out, that's a dap. That's a dumb action, right? Um, team follows who? Uh, as a head coach one year in Alabama, I, we had a quarterback who's going to play, right? We had two of them. 
And I remember in the staff room one day, I just simply asked a question. I said, okay, if we put one of them on that goal line here and one of them on that goal line there, where would the team walk? Well, coach, we think yeah. they would be in here. That's our quarterback, right? That's our quarterback. This other one may be a little better at some things, but the, you know, the kid that inspires and people are going to walk to him, that's your guy. Uh, Want to be high energy. I tell our quarterback this year, Hey man, you got to be the energizer bunny. And it was a neat deal this year, man. I mean, we had a, when I got hired to coach quarterbacks, I inherited a three-year start at quarterback. And by game four, well, I know game three in the second quarter, we had moved him to running back and we put in our backup. And that kid went on to have in 11 games, or I guess 11 and a half games, the best season in Rockmar history as a quarterback. Took us to the state championship game and played lights out. And he's, I mean, everybody was just like, whoa, you know, he surprised us. But, you know, he was a po- positive kid. And then we talk about things being bigger than me, right, bigger than me. You know, being a quarterback is it's bigger than you. So kind of to wrap a bow on this and tie this all together, I think that we go about it, especially I have in the past when I was calling the plays and stuff, I'll go about it backwards. Right? I want to start with the game plan, the Friday night call sheet, and work our way back and then come back to it as opposed to, you know, let's kind of build it up and then we get there and, and then we kind of put it together. And so that way, you know, like Matt talked about, you know, can you pull stuff out? Absolutely. It is that, that call sheet. And I think I fo- we follow the same model everybody else does. You put it together on Sunday. Then by Tuesday, there's things getting pulled out. And then on Wednesday, after Wednesday practice, it, you know, okay, now it's locked. We go into Thursday. It's locked. It's not changing. The only thing I would change is if I'm asking the quarterbacks, are there anything – when I hand it to them on Thursday at school, because we practice in Thursday mornings before school. When I hand it to them on yeah. Thursday at school, what do you not like? Take this Sharpie and mark out the things you just hate, and those things are gone. We don't call him if he doesn't like it. You know, that's, that's, that's beating your head against the wall. No, coach, I, uh, you know, looking back on it, like you said, the, the drill bank thing defensively looking at it, I'm like, why haven't I done this before? Um, it's just that, you know, that's what I love about what we do. Uh, we all write this down and I'm sitting here and like, if, if I were a cartoon character, a light bulb would have popped above my head <laughs> when you said that. I'm like, why haven't I done? And, and, you know, I pride myself on being super organized. I have something similar, but that's just a way better version of it. Let me ask you I'm this like, question. All right, well, that's that's stolen. <laughs> As a defensive coach, like <laughs> talking about drill banks, think about how many tackling drills you would have in a drill bank for position, yeah. each position. I mean, you know, just because that's one of the things I love to see. I love to see defensive coaches. How do they teach tackling? How do they rep it? Like, you know. <sighs> everybody's got the tackling wheels now, right? You know, everybody's got those things. I worked with an offensive line coach. He would work backside zone scoop cutoffs against the tackling wheel. I'd never yeah. seen that. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's, that's, there you go. Like, yeah. like, that's pretty good. You know, so yeah, I mean, I think that, and I stole that. I can't remember who I stole the drill bank from, but it's like, let's try to get it on paper and go from there. Coach, yeah. I agree. That, that, that drill bank is revolutionary in my mind because we always used to do skill banks with well, – we didn't call it skill banks, but we would call them relevant skills to, hey, if we're if we're running power, we got to be able to double team. we got to be able to uh, pull and wrap. we got to be able to kick out. We got So what are all the skills that we need to be able to run this play? We'd list them out and then do drills for those skills. Yep. But I never actually listed that out for my assistant coaches. Hey, here's all the drills and everything that we can work to um, – work in practice and those individual drills. I love the concept of a drill bank. That's awesome. Yeah. Amen. Um, anything, I mean, like that's it. That's kind of, is there any questions or anything you want to bounce around? Or I mean, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I hope somebody Matt gets does. something out of that, that they like, you know, uh, Kyle, can you pull back up his formations? Can we go back to his original format? Cause I, have oh, a question. yeah, I, I, I also I, have a question now that I have saying questions. that. Yeah, please. Coach, Mine's can more you of a walk us? One. Can you walk us through an ex- some examples of your formation calls, like formation, maybe a formation with a motion or a shift, yeah, sure. just so we can hear it and kind of see it? And because uh, I know for everybody, it's a little bit different. If you don't run it this way, and if you haven't done it this way, it'll seem foreign to you at first. But I, like Kyle said, we did do a few similar things uh, with our running backs, and uh, it really changes your offense when you're able to do this. All right, so let's do this. Let's say we're going to start in a two-by-two two formation. All right, so defensively, Kyle's looking at us, and he's like, okay, they're in two-by-two, two, but we're going to end up in a three-by-one. 
All right. So let's go. And I'll even give you the signals. So if we want to flex our tight end to the right hand side on the ball, and we're going to, if it, anything to the right is one arm, anything to the left is two arms are moving. Two, right? yeah. So if we're going to go flex right, then we're going to just simply hold our arm out to the right, right? We're just going to hold one arm out, just point it out. That's, that's Rex. So we're in Rex F stack. So now we've got the tight end flexed out to the right with a Z receiver outside him. Our F is two steps stacked behind the tight end. I'm a lover of funky trips. I love funky trip pictures. Then we've got a split yeah. end away from that. So we've got Rex F stack. Now we're going to take the Z and motion him across, right? We're going to motion him all the way across to get back into two by two. Rex F stack Z motion. So now we're back in a base two by two picture and we can call whatever. Uh, let's just go. Let's do this. Let's go. We're going to, I'm kind of talking it. I'm going to signal it and we'll go. So we're in trips, right? We're going to funky trips, right? We're going to motion to two by two. We're going to run an inside zone to the right hand side to our pistol back. We're going to lock the left guard and left tackle, right? We're going to one, two block that. And we're going to throw an RPO off the back inside linebacker. Rex F stack Z motion two zero. Lock, Z, Finn. So, now, that's a lot. But think about it this yeah. way. Rex is a formation that tells the Y to go here and the Z and the X or know where they're going. They're, they're always on right or left. F stack puts the F stack behind the tight end. So, that's a trigger call for him. So, Rex, F stack, Z motion. We've put in everybody runs motion. You just motion across and line up. Rex stack, Z motion, 2-0. That's inside zone to the right-hand side to the pistol back, 2-0. Quarterback understands that mesh. We teach on inside zone. The quarterback's going to go to butt to the run, eyes to the backside. We're going to lock the backside of the call. So now we're getting a 1-2 block. Nobody's blocking the linebacker. Z thin. So now we've got a read. So Rex, F stack, Z motion, 2-0, lock, Z fin. Or we can go X fin or whoever we want to do. And kind of that's that's so that's a lot, but it ain't really a lot because everybody's just pretty much being told it's a run play. I'm blocking or it's a pass play. I'm told to run this fin route. O-line's blocking 20 lock. Don't matter to them. They don't care about the funky trips. Don't care about the motion. They don't care about any of that. That makes sense. Are, are you are? Yeah. Are you signaling everything? Yeah. And, and I'll be honest with you, if I'm ever in a position where I'm calling the plays again or I'm a head coach, I'm going to have somebody else signal. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't signal. Um, Coach, how, how does that work with your sh you? You talked a lot about your sugar huddles and stuff like that. Yeah. How does that signaling work with your sh sugar huddle? Is your quarterback expected to repeat it to where the, everybody looking? Here, so this is. I, I think this is a funny one. So we, the day we were we were at Cleveland High School and our offensive staff and they're talking about putting sugar huddle in that day, and I'm like, okay, well, we're all kind of talking about the huddle. How are we going to huddle? How are we going to teach it? And my first boss was meticulous in the huddle. The linemen are going to do this, and they're shoulder to shoulder. And the receivers turn and look in. He wanted it like if you're looking down from a drone, he wanted like a rectangle, right? That's what he wanted. <laughs> well, I'm sitting there, and I'm probably a little oversimplifying things. And I'm like, damn, guys, just tell them to get to where they can see the signal. So it would look like this. The exact same play we put in, we just talked about. We're going to go sugar. So everybody bunches up two steps from the ball, and everybody's looking to see the signal. All right, Rex, F stack, Z motion to O lock, Z fin. And so now we can just sugar it, and here's what it's going to be. We're going to sugar it, we're in, we signal it, and then the quarterback's going to go, ready, break, boom, and we're gone. That, that's all it is, ready, break. That's the only coach of points, ready, break, or just break. It don't really matter. And I never even asked the quarterback, did you say ready, break, or just say break? But he's just – or he can just say no. Everybody looks, gets the signal. You know, and then we could, all right, here's another one we could go. Tight end in sniffer to the right. And we want our F split out and stacked behind the Z receiver to the right. So we can go strong, rip, rip paper, Y motion, you know, 2 0, 2 0 chip. Now we've got a built in RPO with the F stack out here, tight end motion, chip the backside in, six man zone. We can sugar it. We could go, you know, style of formation, sugar, get the play call, quarterback goes up. One thing we do, like whenever we would call our, our, our run checks, 
the quarterback wouldn't go up and go 20, 20, 20, because the back don't, the running back, the O line don't care who's getting the ball. They just need to know right or left. So they're going to hear a zero or yeah. one. That tells them inside zone, eight or nine, stretch, you know, wide zone. So that's it. I mean, like I said, it's a lot. It gets a little wordy signally, but I think it takes them a few days. But once they figure out, I'm just looking at what matters to me, it, it goes quickly. Coach, does that change in your two minute at all? Do you go to one word calls or anything like that? No, but you guys are just, you guys do what you do because you're fast at it. We just, yeah. So like that, that, I think that's the best answer. No, but we probably need to, we we could probably go into a situation where we just say, look in two minutes, it's this, it's never, the the formation is this, the protection is 60. We're going to keep the back end and it is, you're always in two by two boundary. It don't matter. And we're going to call this menu of five plus. That yeah. would probably be – then we don't have to call the protection, call the formation. But I think, you know, we, we, we've been pretty good at like two minutes. We've had four or five different situations where we had to do it and got down and got into field goal range or did this or that or scored even over the years. And, I mean, we just get used to – and it's funny, my son that played for me, he's like – the only thing he'd ever ask is, Dad, will you put tape on your fingers? Just put tape on your fingers because it, <laughs> sometimes you get crappy. Yeah. Lighting, and so – but we can go pretty quick. Like, you know, our kids figured out, like, if I'm with you guys, I'm going to go, that's Z, you know, Zorro, Z motion. But in a game, that's Z motion. You know, they kind of start figuring out that is Z, you know, because that's really yeah. quick or, or, you know. And I think I think kids will learn whatever you ask them to learn. And they'll learn it no, if it's emphasized and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated. They, you know, they, they'll get it. No, yeah. I, I agree. I was just curious on that. Because <laughs> I always tell the, you know, defensively, we always start off with the long call, right? So in camp, it may be like nickel flex Carolina adjusted, you know, yep. check laser. Yep. And then by the time we get to game night, it's like, Carolina, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the whole call. You know in Carolina we're in yes. flex. You know here's the trips check. Like, just go. And so I always laugh at that. People are like, well, what's a play call for you? I'm like, what's a play call like in, in camp or on a Friday night? Because Friday night <laughs> it's one different. word. It's absolutely different. And, and I think that the, you know, I'll, I'll reference Dub again. You know, Dub's, when he spoke in Atlanta, listening to him and, and talking ball with him, you know, just texting him all the time. You know, they do a bunch of one-word calls. You know, and, and like, I would like to get to where that's something that's in our that's in our menu. But yeah, I have a tough time with, I have a tough time getting away from just signaling it out so the kids see what matters to them. You know, because I start worrying about, well, what if, okay, what if Rex, F stack, Z motion, 20 lock, Z fin was just going to be called shark? Well, okay, but that's a lot. You know, that's a lot to remember. Now, one thing we yeah. that, that I didn't put on here that we've done in the past is we've just made a NASCAR call, and that repeats what we just did. You know what, but I, but when we do that, now that's going to be very basic. It's going to be a yeah. probably not a motion, not a movement, just something really simple. We can just go fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna, I'm going to give you one more idea, Coach. Okay. Uh, so you talked about just going two by two in the two minute drills, something like yeah. that, or just sticking with something. We used to always have a you always have a player like you guys have your F. You're you're good athlete. You're just trying to get the ball to out yes. of space. Um, so what we do is we'd line up in a two by two, start them into the boundary and then we say, okay, after the first play, you're always aligning to the field. And so it's, we're either going to end up in a three by one or a two by two. And me knowing where we are hash mark to hash mark, I'll know how they're going to align and where the, where the F is going to go, um, on the field. And that was always a great adjustment for us because we wouldn't even have to change the formation and our kids are jumping between two by two and three by one. Because he just knows. That's a, that's a hypo thing. Yeah. Is, that a hypo, is that a hypo deal? That's a hypo thing. I can tell you this from, yes. We did what, it. We did it at Oak Leaf too. Oh our guy was, a, our guy was like a hypo disciple. <laughs> uh, it's a nice play on words there, but it was like, how, how do you guys call formation? I don't know. They just go and line up. We just call. <laughs> like what? Hey. Like, yeah, yeah. No, the kid just knows like, look, if I end up over here, I line up over here, and we're just going to call a play according to to it. You know, if we want to get them back into the boundary, we'll just call a play to the field. I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Here's where my mind doesn't work. My mind doesn't work this way. And, and again, I guess it goes back to progression and wanting the guy to be where he's supposed to be on time so the quarterback knows where it is. But, like, I don't teach passing game in terms of 
okay, you're at one, you're at two, you're at three, right? You know, as a, I teach it as on, right, here you go, on Admiral X. On Admiral X, the Z has a skinny post, the F has a eat post, eat up the safety post, and the X yeah. is running the over and the Y is in the flat. It doesn't matter the formation, the motion, trigger, sugar, cadence, nothing. Admiral X. X has the Z's got a post, F has a post, X has a deep over, double post over, and the Y has a flat. It doesn't matter. So that way the quarterback understands two receiver side, double post, over. So now the progression is inside post, outside post, over, Y check down. You know, and so yeah. but a lot of people teach it at Rockmark. We teach it, you know, it's you're either one or two or three. And that took me a minute to kind of and I've been doing it 25 years. It took me a minute to kind of get rounded around to eh, okay, one, two, you know, to try to put that in language that I speak to get to our quarterbacks to kind of get them, you know, that was hard. That My mind don't work that way. You know, I don't know why it just doesn't. It needs to, but it no, I mean, we all, everybody teaches a different coach. That's, I mean, I talk with coaches all the time. We talk about ripples coverage. And I'm like, what are you doing on that? I'm like, that's yeah. completely different how we do it. Dude, start and, looking uh, at so the rat, rat yeah. coverage and one rat and zero rat. And, yeah. That's, and everybody, you know, many and mod, <laughs> stubby and stumpy, you're going to get 14 different answers. <laughs> it's coach, it just, just help you out here. It's just stump. No, it's just <laughs> stump. Stubby <laughs> and stump. Yeah. I, yeah. Buddy, <laughs> yeah, that's. Study of stubby and stumpy. That's how I learned it. Yeah. I, um, hanging out when I was with 20, kind of 14 Florida state, those were all saving guys. So that's, I learned it right from the, uh, I don't know if it's from the horse's mouth, but it's just a one-off from it. So I still Jeremy Pruitt there, call those guys. <clears throat> What's that? In that time, Jeremy Pruitt, was he there? Right as Pruitt was leaving, I was coming in. Okay. Gotcha. So Charles Kelly was our DC, yes. um, but Hello. Pruitt, like, uh, a GA that was pretty close with Pruitt that kind of bounced around with them was a kid that went to high school with me, George Hilo. Okay. Um, so it was nice because I could always call George and get a, hey, George, I, I saw you guys doing this. Like, what 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 was going on here? Like, what's the call and what's the check? And so it's always been nice to have those references because, you know, everyone gets the PDFs and it's great, but the PDFs don't have all the rules on them. In fact, they don't have half of them for saving. Really? And so it's like, look, I think this is going on right now, but what's, you know, I'm like, what is fire zone man? And they're like, it's ripple is dude. I'm like, <laughs> all right, thanks. There you go. And they're like, look, it's just, you're, it's your ripple is a man down. They're like, so, you know, you just have to carry a few more things through. And I'm like, of course it'd be that simple. I'm over here like Googling fire zone man and reading like <laughs> obscure articles to try to figure it out. And it's like, nah, bro, it's, it's ripple is man <laughs> or ripple is rules with man. So. This yeah, just, so that's uh, dude, I don't know. That's it's, perfect. You know, it's there's a. I'm gonna tell you this great Saban story. <clears throat> I read it the other day. It was it was an article. He got together. They got together. I think it's Sports Illustrated, ESPN. Somebody got together all the guys that work for him that are now head coaches. And uh, the 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 t the punchline of the story was he got mad at Lane Kiffin one day in practice, and he he said, "You're like that character in that children's book. You're JP Funny Bunny. You go around and try to screw everything up." <laughs> <laughs> it's jp funny bunny at home uh, that is. i would like to kind of i know we're kind of ending up i would like to share this uh, anytime i'm asked to speak podcast clinic whatever i always share this this personal feeling about coaching um uh and, and this is kind of it you know as a young coach when i first started i really tried to i was trying to climb the ladder as fast as i could i wanted to be a coordinator by you know, i started coaching about 24 25 I had no desire to ever coach football. I went to college and never was going to do it and met a guy and got into it. And, uh, and so I was trying to climb the ladder as fast as I could, you know, be a, be a, be a varsity assistant. Cause I started out as a freshman coach. So I'd be a varsity assistant and then be a coordinator and be a head coach by this age. And all my goals, I reached them. I reached them at about two or three years earlier than what I had on my goal sheet. Right. Pretty fortunate. And been really lucky to be a head coach at four places, and we've made it. We've made it better than we we found it. And you know, as a coordinator, been real successful and been been lucky. Um, but here's the thing: at one point in my career, I kind of lost track and lost sight of what's important. And this this is kind of this is the corny part of it, but this is what I believe. Um, I got so wrapped up in 
building a pouring concrete into the statue of the coach Malone statue that everybody was building. We were having the best season in this school's history. We were undefeated. We won a region championship for the first time that they had had him forever. We had the best player in Tennessee when Mr. Football, I'm coach of the year in the region, coach of the year in the area and all this stuff. And I was pouring concrete into this pedestal. And I forgot that Tracy is more important than coach, you know, cause Tracy yeah. is Kim's husband and he's reading Tate's dad and he's Larry and Brenda's son. And, you know, coach is what I do, you know, and I used to would make sure that anywhere I went, I was going to wear the the clothing, right? I was going to wear the clothing. So that way that people knew, you know, he's a coach. And I, you know, that season we were on TV all the time and I was getting recognized and I would make sure I wore that stuff to kind of, I wanted that attention. And now, you know, I look back on that and I'm like, man, you know, now I don't, unless I am at work, at school teaching or at practice or in a game or doing something where I'm representing our school, I never wear our colors. I never wear rock mark football stuff ever. I have all these bland colored t-shirts from JC Penny and that's what I wear around. I don't, I don't wear <laughs> colors because that's my reminder to never forget again. Tracy's more important than coach, you know, and I think, I hope that young guys are watching this and I hope young guys hear that because I hope they don't look at it and say, well, that's just an old man being corny. But, you know, man, I can't tell you how many times I chose to be at the field house as opposed to being home and teaching my oldest son to ride a bike. You know, my wife did that. And so yeah, we, we have a great job, man. What we get to do is amazing. But, you know, you lose sight of it. You lose sight of what's important pretty quick. So I always share that. I, anywhere I speak, I always try to share that story and try to kind of impact on somebody. Look, man, it ain't worth – come home, put the phone up, man. Cl- turn the phone off and – be yep. a dad, be a husband, be present, be there. Yeah. And I think I'll Coach, I've, me- I've been, yeah, I've been guilty of that uh, many, many times. Um, but, you know, the best tweet I just saw it the other day, I apologize. I can't remember who it is. I follow so many coaches um, on our Twitter, but it was a guy that said, don't, don't lose this ring chasing that one. And it was a picture of a wedding ring and a state championship was, uh, ring. And uh, the bald headed guy <laughs> from California with the great goatee. Um, is it four? He's, he's the head coach at Coronado High School in California. Um, mm-hmm. Not Chris Four. Chris is a principal. Um, oh, okay. I, 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 I don't I know who it was. Hines. Is it Coach Hines? Hines? That's it. That's the tweet. Yeah, was he, Hines. Yep. It, it was. was yep. So there it is. There's our shout out. It was uh, one of those ones, and I don't even coach right now. But it took me. I looked at it for a minute. I went, "Ooh, yes, absolutely." That's a, that's a good tweet. I'm going to go ahead and retweet that one. Yes. <laughs> And that's it, man. And that's the thing, like, we get so caught up in what we do. You know, I got out of coaching for a year. I sold real estate, which was really stupid. But I got out of it for a year. (laughs) I wear shorts year-round, and it just wasn't me. But here's what I figured out, man, like, true story. I mean, I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's a pretty good-sized town. It shocked me when I walked into a real estate agency and started talking to people. They didn't have a damn clue about high school football. They didn't have a clue. I mean, you know. You get into small towns and everybody's like, oh, God, you know, Rock Mart. Everybody's here. No, they're not. They're not there. Half the people yeah. are here. The people that are going to be here are either going to be alumni or they're going to be people that have kids playing. You know, that's about yeah. it. I mean, it's we make it and we build it up and we put ourselves in this fishbowl. And more times than not, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, on a Friday night, two-thirds of the population aren't at the games that could care less about. You know, they don't <laughs> even know they're going on. You know, we kind of make it bigger than it is. It's big, but, you know, we make it – we we balloon it, I think. Yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Well, Coach, thanks for hopping on tonight. I thought it was a, a fantastic podcast. Uh, I loved it. You know, the way you do install is so thorough and, and good for a lot of coaches to see. And obviously that that drill piece at the end was uh, the drill bank is yep. something I'm I'm definitely going to take to heart. And I know our listeners will as well. Uh, Matt, do you have any other closing remarks? I just think it was super organized the way you presented it, Coach. And um, a lot of coaches – when they go to install, they have a lot of ideas of what they want to do, but they don't drill down into the finite details. And I think you've set it up and shown coaches a way to set it up so that you can drill it down, cover the basics, cover the cover the finite details of what you need to cover, and then get better at it as you go. Um, I absolutely love the method you're using, and uh, obviously it's bringing you guys some success. Guys, I appreciate it, man. I, I really do. It's it's humbling to get to do this and share this time with y'all. And if anybody wants any of this stuff, I will. I'm an open book, man. They they can have every bit of it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coach's contact was at the beginning. Again, if you want to, if you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at the board drill podcast at gmail.com or at board drill pod on Twitter slash X. Um, again, we are, uh, these podcasts go on Apple, they go on Spotify, they go on TikTok. So if you, any kind of social media you want to get on, we're there. Uh, feel free to reach out. And while you're there, if you could subscribe and follow us, that would go a long way to helping me and Matt get some new stuff. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then coming out soon, I'm going to go ahead and preview it now. Me and Matt are opening up a new sub stack. We're going to be writing some articles on football, uh, not only offense and defense, but some culture things, some special teams things. So we're trying to really make an all-inclusive kind of network of the board drill podcast. So Join us on any of those mediums. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out. If you're interested in coming on the show, let us know. Again, we need 52 coaches this year, and we're only about eight through. So looking forward to it. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Coach, thanks again for coming on the Board Drill Podcast, and I'm sure we'll have you on soon uh, to talk a little more football. No doubt. Thanks, man.